This is the story of Indigo Airlines Flight 852. On this channel, we love looking at trends. A couple of months ago, I put out an entire video about near misses in America that were almost collisions by the skin of your teeth. But another trend that we've been covering on this channel are planes over India running out of fuel and then almost crashing. This is the latest installment in that series. On the 2nd of July 2021, an Indigo Airlines Airbus A320 was on the ground at Bangalore headed for Dehradun. Dehradun is a city that's close to the capital, Delhi. So Delhi was chosen as one of the alternates for this flight, with the other one being Jaipur. So the plane was fueled up with the needed amount of fuel to fly to Dehradun. But how do you decide the amount of fuel that you need for a flight? Pilots obviously account for the basics like taxi fuel and trip fuel. Then there are some other categories such as contingency fuel, alternate fuel, and final reserve fuel. The contingency fuel is the fuel that you might need if any contingency has arise. If the winds are different from what you expected, then the contingency fuel should take care of that. The alternate fuel is the fuel that you actually need to fly to your alternate airport. And then the final reserve fuel is this bit of fuel that you hope to never use. If you find yourself burning the reserve fuel, then something has gone very, very wrong. Flight 852 took off from Bangalore and then flew uneventfully to Dehradun. At 10.18 a.m. UTC, the pilot contacted Dehradun Approach for the first time. At this point, the plane was about a thousand feet off of the deck and the pilots were in some pretty bad weather. As the plane descended, the jet got rocked by some pretty nasty crosswinds of up to 50 knots. This was pushing the plane to its limits and so the pilots decided to go around and they put the plane into a hold as they figured out what they needed to do. As the A320 circled, the pilots requested the weather at Delhi from the controllers at Dehradun. The visibility was at 3500 meters and the METAR said trend no SIG, which meant that the weather wasn't supposed to change much over the next couple of hours. This was reassuring for the pilots. You wouldn't want to go all the way there only to find out that the weather was completely untenable, right? Then, when they heard the crew of another Indigo Airbus A320 Flight 953 divert to Delhi, they decided to make the same decision. Thankfully for us, both Airbuses had different liveries. Flight 852, the one that we're talking about, had the minimalist white livery, and Flight 953 was in full Indigo colors. Flight 852 had 2,195 kilos of fuel on board at this time, and the minimum diversion fuel for Delhi was 1,868 kilos. The minimum diversion fuel is the minimum amount of fuel that you need to fly from your current point to Delhi with some healthy margins thrown in there. As the jet flew towards Delhi, the pilots noticed that things did not really add up. The weather that they were seeing and the weather that they had been told about Delhi were worlds apart. The pilots nervously looked over at their fuel displays and saw that they had about 14 minutes of fuel before they'd start to eat through their reserve. As Flight 852 came up to Delhi, the airport was in the westerly mode of operations, meaning that the planes were landing and taking off in a westerly direction. So the crew of Flight 852 were near the start of the approaches for runway 28 and 29. That's when the weather took a turn for the worse. Now Delhi had 50 knot crosswinds. They listened as plane after plane diverted. No one could land. It was so bad that no planes could land from 1121 UTC to 12 UTC. In the cockpit, the pilots listened as more missed approaches came over the radio. The other planes were diverting to either Jaipur or Lucknow, but with their fuel state, making to either of those airports was becoming a smaller possibility with each passing second. As they stressed about what to do, they heard their compatriots, Indigo Flight 953, declare Mayday fuel. You declare Mayday fuel when you know that you're going to be landing with less than your final reserve fuel. A Mayday fuel is basically you being like, I need to land now, get me on the ground as fast as possible. It's a Hail Mary. Knowing that the time to act is now, the pilots of Flight 852 also declared Mayday fuel. Two planes in the span of minutes declared Maydays, and the runways were unusable due to the very heavy winds. That's a pickle if I've ever heard one. The controllers vectored both A320s to the east of the airport, and the pilots of both planes opted to loiter near the approach points for runway 10 and 11 as they waited for the winds to die down. The pilots of 852 asked the controller if he'd be able to get them closer to the approach point of runway 10, 
And the response was, quote, not possible, every aircraft not possible, end quote. The flight crew of 852 then told the controller that they were dangerously low on fuel, and the reply was, quote, two already aircraft diverted who have declared mayday, end quote. I don't know if you caught that, but the controller basically said that two airplanes had already declared mayday. He doesn't realize that he's talking to one of the planes who declared the mayday, so astonishingly he asked them to hold their current position and to do a left orbit. After holding, Flight 852 was put behind Flight 953, and they were number two for landing. Flight 953 landed at 1201 UTC as the first arrival in the easterly mode of operation. Flight 953 then cut through the clouds as they started to see the runway lights at Delhi. Then they got the call to go around. Flight 953 had requested emergency services for their landing, and so there was a fire truck still on the runway they would not be able to make another landing attempt for another seven minutes. They now had 599 kilos of fuel. The pilots now had one shot to stick the landing. If they didn't, they would not have enough fuel to go around, fly the circuit, and then land on a runway. Missing the next approach meant that they might have to flame out over one of the most populated cities in the world. As the pilots closely monitored the fuel gauge, the plane was set up on the approach to runway 11. They flew the approach praying that the winds had died down. They then touched down on runway 11 with 300 kilos of fuel remaining. For context, that's about what you'd need for a go around. Not go around and then fly the circuit and get back onto the runway, just go around, get to altitude, and that's it. The 122 passengers on flight 852 never really knew what trouble they were in as they deplaned. So how does all of this happen? How do two planes, two passenger jets, almost run out of fuel one after the other, putting hundreds of lives at risk? The first thing that you need to know is that the pilots were essentially being lied to by the controllers at Dehradun. You remember that weather report that the controllers gave the pilots? Yeah, it was wrong, flat out wrong. Delhi had a special hotline with Dara Dune so that they could get important information, like weather reports, to its ancillary airports faster. But in this case, the Delhi airport had been broadcasting information that was out of date by hours. The data that they were sending out matched the data that they had sent out at 5 a.m. UTC, more than five hours before the incident. Therefore, when the pilots got these weather reports, they incorrectly assumed that Delhi's weather would be better, but little did they know that they were headed straight into the eye of the storm. But this should not have gotten this far. The screens that show all of these details has a little icon to tell the controller how current the data is. Theoretically, this screen should auto-refresh, but in certain cases, it might not. In that case, the icon that we just talked about would flash red, telling the controllers that the data was stale and someone needed to manually refresh the data. In this case, that did not happen and the incorrect data was broadcasted out to the world and the pilots made life or death decisions with them. The pilots themselves should have requested for more up-to-date information from Delhi, but they made a bigger mistake and that is not declaring minimum fuel. Here's a quote from Indigo's operation manual. Quote, pilot in command shall advise ATC of a minimum fuel state by declaring minimum fuel when having committed to land at a specific aerodrome. The pilot calculates that any change to the existing clearance to that aerodrome may result in landing with less than the planned final reserve fuel. The declaration of minimum fuel informs ATC that all planned aerodrome options have been reduced to a specific aerodrome of intended landing, and any change to the existing clearance may result in landing with less than the planned final reserve fuel." End quote. In simple terms, when you declare minimum fuel, you're letting ATC know that you're getting a bit tight with your fuel here, and you're telling them that this particular airport is your one and only hope. This allows the controllers to get a plane on the ground faster. But these crews did none of that. Both of them went straight to Mayday's. From the perspective of the controller, he went from a less than ideal situation where he had two planes waiting for the weather to clear up to one where he had two planes, both of whom who had declared maydays, vying for his attention. All of that happened over the course of a couple of minutes. The thing is, this could have been so much more worse. 
300 kilos or 661 pounds is not a whole lot of fuel for an A320, especially if you need to go around and then fly the circuit. But this kind of thing just keeps happening in India. I'm starting to feel like a broken record here. We've covered this exact same scenario on this channel before. You want a fuel emergency in South India? I got you. How about an A320 fuel emergency near Delhi from another carrier? I got you there as well. Oh, what? You're not an A320 person? You're like 737s? Well, guess what? Here's a story about a 737 almost running out of fuel near Delhi as well. What do you think? Have all the flyers of India just gotten lucky so far? Or are we overdue for an actual fuel emergency over Delhi? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.